Okay, let's discuss one of the most iconic supernova out there. The supernova known as SN1987A. It's essentially the closest observed supernova in the last few decades, ever since the Kepler supernova in 1604. A gorgeous supernova whose image you see right there in the middle. And because of the proximity to planet Earth, and because this basically happened during the modern age of astronomy, this essentially became one of the most studied objects out there, observed by various telescopes for practically four decades. And as a result, we've learned quite a lot about it, and actually learned quite a lot about supernova in general, because prior to this explosion, pretty much everything we knew about supernova was mostly theoretical. But then, in 1987, the unusual detection of neutrinos coming from this region indicated that something very powerful was happening right here, and was very quickly discovered to be a Type II supernova, a collapse of a very giant star, possibly around 18 solar masses in total, that resulted in one of the most beautiful formations we've ever seen anywhere. But because all of this was essentially observed in real time for many, many years, it allowed the scientists to learn so much about these events by literally analyzing everything. But there was always one mystery. What exactly was left after this? What's right there in the center? Is it some kind of a black hole? Is it a neutron star? Or is it anything? And so for many, many years there was this mystery. The mystery of the invisible remnant. The researchers actually expected to find something, mostly because theories predicted either a black hole or a neutron star, but for decades nothing was visible and nothing was discovered. As a matter of fact, all of the observations with the Hubble Space Telescope pretty much revealed nothing up until relatively recently. Which is of course really surprising because here the researchers were even able to find the progenitor star, or the star that exploded in order to produce this, by looking at older data, including the data from Hubble. In this case, this was a blue supergiant, 18 solar masses in mass. So basically a star that's massive enough to produce some kind of a remnant. And even the detection of neutrinos in this case implied that something was produced after all, maybe a neutron star. But it just, no matter what the scientists looked at, they couldn't find anything to indicate signs of anything in the center, except for that beautiful expanding ring we're going to discuss in a few minutes. But then, after decades and decades, we had first hints in 2019. There's actually an older video in the description discussing this, but in essence, in 2019, the researchers discovered unusually bright dust clumps very close to the position where the remnant should have been located. And the existence of these unusual dust clumps would be difficult to explain unless there was something really dense in the center collecting all of this dust. Further observations a few years later, specifically in 2021, revealed extremely powerful X-ray emissions coming from the vicinity of this location. And in terms of X-rays, these emissions were extremely similar to beautiful structures we usually refer to as Pulsar Wind Nebula. Here's a time lapse of a very famous Crab Nebula. And so here the X-ray emissions suggested that this is maybe a very similar object. Once again hinting that there is something in the middle, and that something could be some kind of a neutron star. Although I guess more specifically, a pulsar. But in this case, the jets from the pulsar were just not pointed at Earth, and so we could not see it very easily from our perspective. But if this was a pulsar, it must have had either extremely strong or extremely weak magnetic field, because not a lot of additional signs were visible giving away its position. Or maybe this was a black hole after all, which is why we were not seeing anything. And so basically this was a kind of a missing neutron star mystery that was almost four decades old. And that was until the observations from the James Webb. In this case there were several observations conducted over a period of several weeks, but the first observations from the center revealed something really important. It actually kind of looks like this. Ionized argon. Very distinct emission lines located right in the center that could only be produced by argon that was ionized by something extremely powerful in the center. With signs of this argon detected in various locations both in the center and around the ring. And because there was no other way to produce this extremely close to the center, and also because this argon was actually moving relatively fast, it only implied one thing. There was a very dense object, specifically very likely a neutron star, that was moving really fast away from the center, illuminating and ionizing gas in the process, producing the effects we observe from planet Earth. Now technically this could be done by a black hole as well, but this black hole would have to have some kind of a partner, actually a star, 
In other words, it has to be a binary object, and in this case, because we're not observing any stars in this vicinity, that explanation would not make sense. And it wasn't just argon, there was actually a lot of other stuff, including things like sulfur and potentially silicon, that were also being ionized by something, with the only explanation once again being a neutron star. But once again, very likely a pulsar, with very powerful jets, in essence responsible for all of this ionization and for production of all of this highly charged gas. And that's because in order to ionize argon, it has to be affected by something really powerful in order to strip electrons and make it ionized. And that can only be done by something with intense ultraviolet or X-ray radiation, which is unlikely to be anything but a really powerful neutron star. But I guess more intriguingly, it does not seem to be entirely in the center. It actually appears to be moving away from the center at approximately 400 km per second toward us. And that's because it's quite likely that during this supernova, this powerful event was most likely one-sided, with the neutron star eventually getting kicked out and moving away from the center at 400 km per second toward planet Earth. Which means that in the last five years or so, researchers were finally able to find at least three pieces of evidence almost definitively suggesting that there is a pulsar here after all, and it's definitely moving really fast, ionizing everything in its way. But this wasn't the only discovery from the James Webb or from the supernova, because the other focus was also on this beautiful ring around the supernova remnant. And as you can see, this ring transformed quite dramatically over the years. And intriguingly, the first three rings became visible just a few months after the initial supernova back in 1987. They weren't actually visible at first, but they basically became turned on as the supernova explosion expanded, and essentially as the material from the supernova started to hit the gas that was released by the star right before it exploded, thus producing these beautiful formations you see right here. And so this was actually ionization of gas released by the star before it exploded that was now emitting a lot of different frequencies of light as all of this started to be ionized and as the gas started to interact with the ejecta from the explosion. Which is actually why it started to change colors so much and even started to brighten up in the early 2000s. In case you're wondering, this is actually not even that large. The inner ring here is approximately 0.6 light years in size. And so as the material from the explosion moved farther and farther away from the center, it continuously interacted with all of the stuff released by the star during its red and blue supergiant stages thousands and even millions of years prior with the ejecta itself moving at approximately 7,000 km per second, basically catching up with all of this material. And between 2001 and 2009, there was so much gas interaction here that the amount of X-rays increased by at least three times during this time. But the shockwave was also dispersing and destroying all of these clumpy formations, with all of them very likely eventually gone sometime before 2030. And so these are actually some of the last observations of this unusual formation, and will eventually be gone in the next few years. And the radio observations from 2018 confirmed that a lot of the shockwave here must have already left circumstellar material, with the shockwave now moving a little bit faster because it already passed through most of the gas. And here's actually a really beautiful animation showing us what this entire formation looks like in three dimensions. But from our perspective, it basically appears as this beautiful number 8, with the number 8 itself in essence formed by the other shockwaves moving in a bipolar direction. And so some of the recent observations from the James Webb definitively confirm that the shockwave has now exited the gas left by the star. Which implies that the ring is now going to become dimmer and dimmer every single year. And that of course means that this is our last chance to sneak a peek at this beautiful ring and to conduct scientific studies into what happens when the shockwave from the supernova reaches the remnant of stellar emissions from giant stars. Here's actually a really cool picture released by NASA, basically showing us how all of this changed over the years. And so now, in the next few years, this is all going to start disappearing, with the entire structure potentially gone by late 2020s. But, most importantly, a lot of mysteries about this particular event and this beautiful supernova remnant have now officially been solved. It did take like three decades, but we finally discovered signs of the pulsar, confirming all of the previous assumptions and previous theories, even though it did take really powerful telescopes to finally discover the evidence. And so these are the last few years we have to study this iconic event, because chances are similar events or similar nearby events are unlikely to happen for a very long time. 
Like I mentioned in the beginning, the last nearby supernova was approximately 400 years ago. Now, given it was much closer to us, but still, for something similar to happen again, we would probably have to wait at least a few decades. Anyway, really exciting discoveries and really important confirmations, but at least for now, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.